What becomes insane if you think about it for too long? Well. Thoughts. The fact that my brain is wired in a way that makes it produce inner images. Brand new ideas. Sadness. Joy. And excitement. And that I can sit at my desk and wonder why I'm thinking what I am without automatically having the answer from the thing that's producing the thoughts is pretty insane. Edit. On top of that we have extremely different ways of thinking. If I'm imagining a situation. It plays out as a sort of movie in my head yet if I'm thinking about an idea. I'm basically having a one-way conversation with an imaginary counterpart. I know some people who think in letters being written on a paper and some for whom thoughts are abstract concepts that doesn't materialize in any way. Do yourself a favor and ask your friends how they think. It's really eye-opening. Size. I am unimaginably large compared to an atom. But I am so small I'm less than a billionth of a grain of sand compared to the universe. Words. Like. If you think about a word for too long. It just begins to sound funny. The idea of you not existing before you were born and conceived. Think about where you were 2000 years ago. For me language I mean there's hundreds of languages. They were all just created from made up noises. We created different languages sign. Spanish. Latin. Arabic etc. It's just wild to have so many different ones. Death. What nothingness might feel like. What if there's an afterlife? What is going to happen to the memory of you when you die? Eventually no one will be alive who knew you and you will mostly be forgotten. The vastness of space. The reason we haven't heard from any other civilizations is mostly likely because it's just too far away. We spend most of our lives getting up to go do something we do not enjoy school work chores etc there's this immensely huge universe yet something has to be beyond right the universe contains everything that exists but everything can't be everywhere right so beyond the farthest star past the furthest rock even after the farthest atom what is there is it just infinite nothing but what would nothing look like how people don't think what i think that there are people living their lives with their own thoughts about a situation they're in Best way to put is when everyone is on the highway we're all going in the same direction but not going to the same place. And we all have different emotions, and feelings. And thoughts about the trip we're on or the place we're going. Like I could be going to see family. And the person in the car beside me could be on the way to a work. It's always crazy for me to think about what someone else is doing, thinking while I'm just sitting here. For me everything. Think about something for too long and existential crisis thoughts be heading in. Genitals. Why the heck are we attracted to them? Why am I drawn to some woman slit between her legs and some milk dispensers in her chest? Am I insane? The morbidity of human anatomy. For example. We see eyes as beautiful. In their context. But look behind the eyelids and eyelashes and there we have it. The brutal facts of anatomy staring right at us. The concept of money. Like we've just collectively decided that certain pieces of paper and metal have some imagined value? You ever look at a letter too long and think like wow this looks weird. Then start second guessing yourself that you wrote the letter wrong. The fact that some things in our body happen without us knowing and our brain knows to do those things without us knowing so. The thing that baffles me the most is the concept of consciousness. Dancing. Why do we like to watch people moving their bodies in weird ways? Why do we like moving our bodies in weird ways? The idea of ownership. It seems self-evident but it's a pure imaginary human concept. The idea that you can just look at a piece of land and say, mine, and it will be true for all your children and your children's children until the end of time. But then anyone with a sword can challenge this right so you have to be able to defend it so that it's truly yours. In a sense it comes back to the same might makes right you find in nature. Nothing is truly yours unless you are ready to work to protect it. But then civilization moves on and the legal system and now when you own something. You have the firepower of an entire country to back your claim. So in effect. Arbitrary things belong to you and all your lineage for the end of time without you having to do anything to protect it. And that's kind of crazy when you compare it to the animal kingdom. But then people start saying that they not only own stuff. But they also own ideas. You know that song? It's just some vibration you do with your voice. Well you can't do that anymore. You can splash painting on a canvas randomly but God forbids it starts looking too much like another thing I own and I didn't even create. But my great grandfather. 
And if that splash of painting looks like three dots, two small and one big, that looks like maybe a mouse. Then may God have mercy on your soul. And that's crazy to me. What really happens when you die? I've thought something like if I die do I float in a dark abyss forever? No light just endless darkness with nothing to do other than exist in it. Ketchup is technically a smoothie. Since tomatoes are a fruit, how come anything exists rather than nothing? I find that non-existence is more logical. Existence. Not just of our own. But of everything. Sure. There's a big universe and stuff. But what about before that? And then before that? Why does anything exist at all? My guess. It's one big off simulation. It's the only thing I can think of that satisfies the we suddenly exist hypothesis. There is a hole in the earth that consumes water at an alarming rate. Scientists have dumped items ranging from GPS devices to thousands of ping pong balls. GPS signals were lost and the ping pong balls never showed up anywhere. Scientists have no idea where the hole goes and where the massive amounts of water that go into it every single day actually go. Edit. I was wrong it is not a hole. It is called Devil's Kettle Falls and is in Lake Superior. I think. Therefore I am. Some facts about the human anatomy. Like the length of all arteries and veins in our body is about 60,000 miles 100,000 kilometers. Also the length of the DNA in a single microscopic cell is almost 3 meters. What is normal? What is a normal person? If you took every trait that makes up your average person you would have someone that it is anything but. Yet we are still expected to conform to the idea of normal. Objective truth. How can anybody say that anything is objectively true when truth is inherently derived from the perception of flawed, fallible beings? Sure. It's technically true that I can't transform into a pink elephant and fly around the room. But if everybody in the world believed I could with all their heart, then who's right? Morality. How do we manage to hold others to ephemeral ideals that are more or less arbitrarily taught to us as we grow up? Is the point of morality just simple suppression of human nature? Or something more profound? The passage of time. As I write this, and as you read it you are reading it in the present moment. However the second you become conscious of this fact it's already become the past. How can something as complex as human consciousness arise from such basic building blocks? A couple of hydrogen atoms were sitting around one day. And now they're wondering how they got there. Strange loops aside. The idea that seemingly chaotic systems can resolve to follow axiomatic laws and become capable of self-reference seems absolutely bizarre. Shit's whack. The only way to know what happens when you die is to actually die. And you can't really test it out and see what happens and come back if it's not what you want it to be. How airplane wings work. Most people have absolutely no idea how they work and it blows their mind when I tell them. Basically there is a thing called Bernoulli's principle where if a liquid moves at a velocity its pressure drops. So the top of an airplane wing is longer than the bottom. The air like splits when it hits the leading edge of the wing but meets up on the trailing edge. But the air on the top traveled a further distance to get there so it was faster which means its pressure is lower. Higher pressure on bottom. Lower pressure on top. Due to the way it is the wing basically gets sucked up. Source, pilot. The 95% of the ocean still unexplored. I wonder how many life forms are yet to be discovered. The idea of deep nothingness. Scares me. Any word. Even better. Say it out loud over and over again. Sleep. Every day people just lose consciousness for a few hours and if they don't they die. Most people are okay with eating cattle. Pigs. Chickens. Etc. But the idea of eating cats, dogs is mortifying. Edit. I'm not a vegetarian. The idea of the afterlife. I constantly worry about what if here's nothing. But nothing doesn't technically exist since everything is something. Nothingness in itself is something so I guess it's a paradox of sorts. I suppose my brain can't quite comprehend what it is to not have consciousness. I know that everyone says the universe is vast and endless but where did the universe come from? And if it disappeared what is nothing? Nothing is space but space is the universe. So how can there be nothing? Empty space. Empty air. But that's something how can there be nothing? Even so. Is there another universe? Now I don't know if this is just me but I can't wrap my head around the universe going on forever. How it can't come to an end. Where is everywhere? 
I try to amagen this but I see a flat image and forget that up and down don't matter. So maybe the afterlife is in another universe? But how do you get out of this one if we just establish the universe goes on forever?